guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm lisa also known as la dolce lisa and in today's video i decided to do something that i've been wanting to do for the past year or so but because of a quarantine i really wanted to film this video with my dad but because it's not necessarily that safe to see him yet i had a way to include him in this video anyway but i'm going to be talking to you guys about this bookshelf you'll be seeing a lot more of it in my video but basically my sister and i as well as my dad we designed this bookshelf so we literally designed how it looks and we also strategically placed in certain things and I know that that is kind of like a difficult thing maybe you're moving in or maybe you want to redecorate but basically a blank bookshelf can be quite intimidating and it's really difficult to think of adding things that won't look too cluttered or messy but you still want to keep maybe your personality or certain aspects of your life that you love so we sort of designed this bookshelf to sort of fit all of those needs as well. We kind of kept it with a theme and I'm just really happy to be talking to you guys about this. So if you guys are having a struggle really and you need some inspiration, I have decided to create this video on basically how to decorate a bookshelf, especially a living room bookshelf that has a TV feature and so on and so forth. So without talking too much, well actually, I'm gonna be pretty much talking in this entire video, but let's get right to it and let's go and talk about a little bit of this bookshelf and how it came together and the pieces that I really love. So first things first, what we had in mind when we were designing this bookshelf is that we wanted it to look really pretty and to match sort of the style of our condo. So we love neutrals and nudes and things like that. And we also really adore the idea of mixing in old with new. So we have some vintage pieces with maybe some modern pieces. So pieces that you'd have to source at like a garage sale or a content sale or something that would be a family heirloom with something that you could even get at home sense. So you kind of can mix in old with new and keep things looking fresh but also very chic and classy so we sort of have a neutral theme that has to do with a little bit of our love of all things vintage and we really love knickknacks and in theme because it's like our tv room where we watch our movies and it's sort of like the cinema area we have a large collection of sort of like our video cameras as well as picture cameras so it's like these vintage cameras some of them were heirlooms from my grandfather so my grandfather's video cameras that he would actually record with in the 60s let's say and then we also have a few art deco style cameras and just vintage little brownie cameras and things like that that you'd have to either have as in a family heirloom or that you'd be able to source at somewhere like maybe value village if you get lucky or like a certain garage sale or content sale online things like that. You can buy certain things online, but they're quite expensive. So if you keep an eye out for things at a garage sale or content sale, you can find certain pieces that are so much more inexpensive. Like we really love typewriters in this family. So we collected this gorgeous mini portable Remington typewriter. It's actually smaller than your average typewriter, but we thought that it looks so cute on our bookshelf. And as you can see, we have the themes of neutrals and whites, creams, even golds and blacks just popped into there for some versatility. But when you're designing a bookshelf, if you want to keep it within your style, if you are someone who prefers more of like a funky look, I would say stick with that. So the first things first when you're designing a bookshelf is you probably want to pick a theme. So we knew that we wanted a neutral. So how my sister and I sort of did the bookshelf is my dad would bring a bunch of things that he had from home or things that he sourced at garage sales or content sales. And we would go through them and we would say, no, yes, dad, keep an eye out for books with this color theme, with like a nude color theme, or please find us a typewriter or find us a certain camera and things like that. So we really kind of had an idea of what we wanted. And then we worked from there. There. So you can see there's even some vases that are super old. There's old jars that are like very, very old and vintage. My dad even said that they were about 100 years old or so. And then you even pop in like a little home sense vine, a vase like that, just to kind of go, even things that sort of look old, but they're not, just to sort of fill it up, especially if you're on a budget or anything like that. You can find really cute things at home sense or Amazon or certain stores like there's a bunch of just craftsy stores that you can get certain cute things but i highly recommend going also with the vintage route checking out your local like confinement store or something like that and finding certain old pieces so we knew that we wanted that definitely <laughs> 
we mixed in a few things like we even have this little potted cactus plant that my sister and I got when we first moved in here and it's been going ever since so it kind of just gives us like this really cozy feeling like a sort of homey feeling if you will to even incorporate a live plant so if you have a succulent if your bookshelf is in an area like ours where you can pick up some light pop in even a live plant it looks really really pretty it's maybe something inspired of your travel so we have these little paris bookends that of course you can get at home sense you can order them on amazon or what have you pop those in and they sort of go with the theme anyway even though they're not vintage they're still on theme so again mixing old with new is a favorite look of mine when it comes to a bookshelf have a theme in mind like some of our specific areas in the bookshelf we had a specific theme so we did a little bit of like a travel theme with cameras and the binoculars paris the little fiat something that looks sort of travel like you can pop in certain old picture frames you can pop in books that also add height to your bookshelf as well which is a really nice look or go to a family member ask someone if they have anything that they're willing to give you or lend out to you or if you have anything that means something to you maybe you have like an old journal of like a grandfather's or like in our case we have our grandfather's cameras they're meaningful as well so not just placing random things that just look pretty but you also want to give your bookshelf make it come to life with meaning and things like that now let's go over to the other area so you can kind of change view a little bit so you'll also have certain areas on your bookshelf that maybe your bookshelf has a large window and you don't necessarily have all of these mini knickknacks like we have because my family loves to collect mini things and that looks so good in a bookshelf but maybe you want to have something that will just fill up a lot of space well these old vintage radios really fill up a lot of space and they sort of make like a nice just frame just somewhere where your eye is instantly drawn to so i really like also popping in something larger maybe not just one piece but something large like we have with a little bit of those mini cameras i think it looks really pretty so maybe clutter isn't your thing and you don't want too much clutter just popping in a few big pieces but having them come to life is just really special so pre-quarantine when my dad would come over very often he was famous for reorganizing our bookshelf so you might think that there's a lot going on here a lot of knickknacks but my dad knew where everything was and if something gets moved he'd kind of notice and he'd kind of see it and he'd always be like the king of popping in something extra and then maybe like five days later we'd call him and we'd say hey where did this come from and he's like aha you finally noticed now so he really helped my sister and i design this bookshelf when we came in and i don't think it would have looked half as good if it was wasn't for him and his artistic flair and his eye for vintage finds he's great at sourcing things out online he actually just loves it it's a hobby of his as well I would like to pop my dad in this video so that he can sort of explain his just where he gets his inspiration from when it comes to picking certain pieces and talking about a little bit of the memories behind all the knickknacks so I'm gonna pop my dad on into this video so that you guys can hear what he has to say because he's just so cute and like I said I really wanted him to be in this video so this is just my way of doing it so I FaceTime my dad the man behind the bookshelf to talk about a few things with you guys so dad what would you like to talk about first Guys, uh, let's just talk about collectibles uh, in general and then specifically the things uh, I have. Okay. Remember, anyone that's into collectibles, they want things for a certain reason. Either because they like something by design or they like something for a purpose that it reminds them of, of an event in the past, uh, of something that happened in their lives years ago. So my fascination with the items that uh, I helped you put together on your bookcase are, is uh, basically one uh, with anything that, that brings me back to a time when things were constructed differently. Uh, there was another way of doing things. So that's why you'll see the uh, vintage bottles are there because they're not like modern pop bottles. They were... They were created in a very unique way, a very beautiful way. Uh, that glass is formed glass. Uh, for example, that large bottle in the threesome of bottles is an orange crush bottle that goes back to the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, we had orange crush bottles, but they looked nothing like uh, what I have there. The other one is some type of pop bottle. And I loved the, the, that liquor bottle. It's probably a bottle of gin. Mm -hmm. Again, because of its uh, somewhat uh, symmetrical design and 
I can't it evokes a bit of my fascination with anything art deco because mm-hmm. those cameras that you're looking at now I call them art deco design mm-hmm. because again of these symmetric uh, geometrical figures and uh, uh, they just evoke a time that uh, is no longer here the little brownie camera reminds me of when I was a little guy maybe four or five six years old my dad had one mm-hmm. that little italian uh, model is the famous fiat and they call it topolino which means little mouse <laughs> and that's iconic uh, for the type of vehicles that italians had again in the the 40s 50s and 60s we've got that uh, lovely remington typewriter mm-hmm. again it's an early model probably again early 1900s maybe 1920 25 and the beauty is not only is it a portable but it's a mini portable so it's even smaller than your typical portables that were developed years later mm-hmm. again i've always had a fascination with miniatures like uh, when I was a kid, I loved little mini cameras <laughs> or mini TVs. We've got the opera glasses, which are cool. Yeah. Uh, and where do you the, get a lot of these things? Most of the things that you see on the uh, bookcase, adorning that bookcase, were uh, were purchased at just random garage sales. Mm-hmm. And uh, the occasional little item was uh, given to me by my dad. For example, oh. your bottom health has a lovely sharp mini tv Mm -hmm. one of the first mini tvs ever sold uh, commercially my dad purchased that tv in the uh, Mm mid-60s and i held on to it because again i love anything mini (laughs) me too uh even movie cameras uh, yeah you've got a couple of lovely movie cameras up there Mm -hmm. that were actually your grandfather's and he took uh, quite a few uh home videos in the 50s and 60s mm-hmm. well, there you go you've got uh, you've got a lovely panoramic view now <laughs> the entire bookcase oh, thanks dad okay anything else baby that's it thank you dad love you love you too ciao ciao So if you are designing a bookshelf, if you're in the process of designing something, some tips that I would recommend are having open drawers, but also having closed drawers as well. So we kept the top part open. We have an area for the TV and then the bottom is completely closed because it is good to also use a bookshelf for storage as well. If you can, we popped in this little fireplace. We actually took this fireplace from an old bookshelf that we had. So before we personally built this built-in bookshelf, we had this little mini, sort of fireplace TV stand that we absolutely just hated but we decided to repurpose that so we kept the fireplace that went with that but we built that on to this bookshelf so we chose the stones that went with it and I think it came out really well we really like it there are some pot lights at the top to sort of highlight the cameras so again because the certain areas are busy here we sort of kept the top area a frame of just cameras to give it that cinema vibe and to not overwhelm the eyes so really the main focus is in the middle and then you have a little pop of camera on the top so that it just looks natural like a natural cinema vibe and then the bottom is just empty so that there's not too much to focus on at once so yeah my top tips are definitely to pick a theme play around with different sizes and textures and patterns so even if you do have certain neutral colors going on it doesn't have to look boring or drab by any means so that is a lot of what makes our bookshelf really pretty thank you so much for watching this video was a long time coming my sister and i just had a lot of fun decorating our bookshelf with my father and sometimes if my bookshelf would ever be featured in like my insta stories or things like that i'd always get comments on it on how pretty it was so i just was really inspired to make a video like this for you guys so if you guys did enjoy this video this more like home design style video please give me a thumbs up so i know that this is the kind of content that you like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one but until next time i'll see you soon and i hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy wherever you are bye guys